Okay, now, I can say that was a rough weekend. Monday was the day I was supposed to go back to the hospital. It's 40 minutes from here. Um, they were going to give me the results of my scan and to remove my catheter. Now, this is where a moment that uh, of realization in one way, which is, I feel bad for people. When you go to the hospital with four stage cancer, they treat you differently, I see, I feel. I mean, I went to the emergency ward, which usually takes us 12, 14, 16, 18 hours to get through, and they took me right back. And when they book you a scan, here, because I'm in Canada, um, it, you can take, people can wait six, eight months just to get a scan. But here, I can say I got a scan the same day. And now I get scans within a week. What about the poor people that are need to know or they need to catch a cancer early enough and they got to wait months for, for a test? So there's a little bit something screwy with the way the system works. You know. Oh well. I can't change everything. I'd like to, but. Okay, Monday morning. We're off to the hospital 40 minutes from here. I say they take me right in. It's nice. Now it's a little strange because it's a tiny little hospital and a lot of the doctors are only part time there. They come and go. So the doctor that saw me twice before my scan wasn't the doctor that was there this Monday. He was a temporary person. And where the room I was in, the wife and I were in, we were right across from the nurse's area. And we heard this person complaining. We'll put it that way, mildly. Well, it's not right how she got stuck to do this and that and, you know, I was only here for one day and I got to do this kind of stuff and I mean went on and on I you know and we didn't know what they were talking about at the time kind of worried and then she came right into my room and it's something it's funny because I just blurted it right out I know I've got cancer and I took the edge off right away she thought that she was only here for one day and she had to give me the news that I had four stage cancer so it kind of took the edge off, and she was actually pretty nice about it. She actually sat down and told us about some of the, how, I almost said bad. Now, the thing is to stay positive. Yeah, it's hard, but you've got to stay positive. I mean, I'm lucky I got Jesus on my side because it's been a tough road. Okay, now. I'm not going to read it all because uh, it's quite a long page. I'll give you the highlights. Uh, first of all, my back was a burst fracture and my T11 had burst. Um, uh, reducing the diameter of the spinal canal to roughly 8 millimeters. Uh, all the liquids have been changed. Da, da, da. There was posterior spinal process of the T9, there was a, the right L4, the right L3, the right TL rib to see the angle. Uh, I said uh, lesions throughout. Multi multiple bony mastastasis suspected throughout the visualized spine and pelvis. Large enhanced lymph nodes Further exam, CT scan is suggested. Uh, a 12 by 18 millimeter node. I mean, it goes on and on. Um, <laughs> kind of sunk in that it wasn't just prostate cancer. It had spread. Oh, this is up here too. It had uh, invaded my bladder. My bladder collapsed. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, quite a bit of stuff going on. Really, even away, 
because I know what I'm battling against. You know, it's, uh, I mean, my shoulder still hurt. It never healed. I didn't understand. Kind of, kind of, you know, put things in perspective. And uh, she was very nice about it. She's the one who set up with the, get the, for me to see a urologist. I had a set up for have a CT scan that. Yes, the second was it the same exact day. Yeah, I checked my. Yes. Yes, on the same afternoon, I left there and went back to the other hospital, which is an, an hour and a half from there. You know, have a CT scan. Uh, she explained a little bit, which she, you know, gave me an idea. And if I had pain, to take the morphine. Cut, at least take enough that I can cut the edge off, I could rest. I hadn't rested rest at all. I couldn't gotten any sleep. I still hadn't put any weight on. I hadn't been eating. I didn't have an appetite. Uh, I was weak. I was skinny. I mean, can't even describe. I didn't feel like I was alive. That's how bad it was. So we went back to the other place to have a CT scan. And uh, I don't remember what happened there. So we didn't have the results right away on any of that. I just mean it was terrible. I mean, they, they helped me up, lift me up onto the, 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 anywhere I went. I couldn't walk, you know, get up onto a table by myself. Forget that. I couldn't do anything. I mean, but I understood now why I was in so much pain. My shoulder was completely eaten away. I mean, you know, I had a burst vertebrae in my back. A couple other discs that were bulged and, I mean, there was a page of stuff. And, uh, that was on the 24th of April. The 26th, I had my first, the urologist called me at home, which was great. Just to introduce himself and get me started on, okay, I'm here, here I am trying again. Biacalutamide, 50 milligrams. I started that the next day. I went right down to the pharmacy, picked it up, started that. He was very encouraging, very promising, very, you know, very positive, upbeat, you know, where the other one said I was done, basically, nothing we can do for you. This guy was upbeat, He's, he has been right from the start, he's been up and down with his uh, uh, lifespan thing, uh, he's been up and down since day one, you know, I guess as I progressed or how my story's coming along. We'll get through that as we go along. I tried to write it down in order. Um, like I say, my PSA was 873, which I know, which is know is very important when you're dealing with prostate cancer. You have to cut down the the, the, the producing of the re, uh, the uh, testosterone. It's feeding the cancer, so that's what they try to do. They don't try to do anything with the cancer much other than you know we'll get to the radiation chemo and all that other. So, like I say, talked to him, was very positive, he said he'd see me next, the next week, I think I believe, or a week after, uh, May 2nd. We drove to see him, it was a, it's a three hour drive to go to see him. Um, kind of explained stuff a bit, you know, but he was, he was saying, I could get you two years. So, I mean, that was encouraging. I mean, that was changed me right there, you know. I was going from having no time to, he figures I can get me two years. <coughs> now, whether he was just being encouraging or maybe that is. I mean, I don't know anything about it. I, at this time, I hadn't looked anything up. I had too much on my plate to deal with stuff like that. Um, now, he did give me my first injection of Solidex LA 84-day. Injection. Whew. Tell him about that. Yeah. Now he was talking to me, and he reached over and he grabbed a hold of my gut. I said, "Don't tell him about that." Oh, 
We said, don't tell them. Okay, I won't. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. But uh, I get the injection like, you know, every three months, say, four days. Um, and he set up for me to meet the chemo guy, radiation guy. So we left there kind of positive, three hours home. Next week, we first met to uh, May 8th. We drove three hours, a little off, a little different direction to another, to the cancer center. And the first day we met the chemo doctor. Nice fella. Yeah, yeah, very nice, young, very smart. Now he wanted to take over. He said, I'm going to deal, I'll take over. You forget about the other guy, I'm going to deal with you. He said, and then we started talking and he looked at my file and talked about chemo and he said, no, I don't know if we're going to go with the chemo yet. Let's see how your rest of your stuff goes. So, okay. I, I hated the thought of chemo. I was thinking about refusing doing chemo anyways. Uh, my thought was chemo drives you down. It knocks your immune system down. You're so sick. I mean, I'm not young. Uh, I was 62 at the time. If I was 40 or 50 years old, I might do the whole shooting match. I don't think I could tough the chemo. You guys got to be pretty tough to deal with that. So it went kind of in my favor. Now the problem is we had to see the radiation guy. He's in the same place, but they couldn't put it on the same day. They couldn't work it out. So we drove three hours home. The next day we drove three hours back. And I thought I was meeting the radiation doctor. No, that didn't happen. Uh, met a nurse. She kind of explained what's going on. And, uh, they took me in on the table. Now. I was so bad of shape. I had canes. I was trying to walk. They took three of them and left me up on the table. And they did some x-rays and stuff, or I guess whatever they were doing. And, First tattoo on. And, oh, yeah. Then they put tattoos on you. I guess it's, I, they explained it was for alignment. So I got five spots, uh, tattoos that they put on in certain spots where they can align. For, like when you go back for the radiation, they can line it up. So you're in the same position each time. Never did get to meet the radiation doctor that day. So we drove home again. And, uh, let me see, I'm going to check my list to see where we're at here. Okay. Okay. May 10th, which is the next day. I mean, this, that's the one thing about cancer. When you get it, man, it's just, Bang, 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 bang. I mean, you don't get a chance to breathe. It's one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. Um, I'm, they're pretty good here about getting stuff moving. Let's say, I didn't have a family doctor. It's tough to get them here. I don't know what other provinces of Canada, but where we are in Nova Scotia, family doctors are rare. They're hard to get. So we've been on a waiting list. Now, I met my family doctor for the first time. They've given me one. Um, strange, strange meeting that day. I think because they just dropped, dropped, she was brand new here, and they just dumped me in her lap kind of thing and said, here you go. And I went in to meet her and kind of looked at my file and looked at me and he goes, you're alive in the morning? Be happy. You have pain? <laughs> Take a morphine pill. Basically, that was the appointment. That's basically, that's it. They're taking care of you? Good. Okay, that's my family doctor. The next day, I got a call from what's called the Cancer Navigator. I mean, this is all new to me. I had no idea what was going on. Um, all a surprise. Now, she's good. I must tell you, I've dealt with this person a few times since then. You, you, this person is good. They know the business. I mean, she was the one who called to got me the family doctor. I didn't know that. She uh, got in touch with a, a fund that was around here to, you know, to help out people and, and get people, cancer. People, you know, they give you a pamphlet and who to deal with, who to talk to if you need help and all that. And uh, 
really great. She's helped me a couple times later on, which I'll discuss as we go. Um, okay, now, this 15th of May. It's been a rough week. I mean, I'm still taking, I'm just taking five more morphine pills just to get rest. And I wasn't resting much at that. I was trying to eat. I wasn't, I couldn't keep food down. I was drinking Boost. I mean, those Boost supplements saved me a lot. I, I don't know if I'd be here if it weren't for that. I, I just couldn't keep food down. I wasn't hungry. I had no appetite. I wasn't peeing much. Uh, catheter bag in, you know, not the greatest place. You know, um, I didn't realize but at the time, I didn't, because there's so much going on that I hadn't pooped in a few days. Um, so the 15th of May, my wife had been struggling to find a, a, somebody that would he, pray for me, put hands on and, and I needed it bad. And didn't want you have radiation the next day. Yeah, yeah. The radiation scared us bad. We didn't want to have to do it. Well, the chemo radiation. But this tomorrow would the next day would have been the chemo the uh, radiation, excuse me. And uh, they were gonna radiate down my spine and across my pelvis. He said that's all we can do. Try to help take some of the pain away. There's just too many you got too many lesions to to, to deal with. And we'll start with that. And my wife was talking to the neighbor and said, is there anybody around here? And sure enough, he knew somebody. I mean, the fella came to our house with other people with him to pray for me. I was in excruciating pain with canes. I couldn't get around. Some of you guys may not believe in this, but believe me, for me, my trust in Jesus and faith in God has helped me so much. I mean, they prayed with me and I came off the ground. My pain was gone. I have not taken a morphine pill to this day. I've been close. Believe me, I believe me, I've been close. Last night was another night. Another story. I went back to that cancer center three hours away from here. I walked in. There was a person sitting in the waiting room. And she said to my wife, I remember you from last week. She said, where's that person that was with you last week that was in such bad shape? She said, this is him. I was walking on my own without my canes. I mean, their mouths are open. I walked into the radiation room on my own power. They'd already had three people there ready to lift me up onto the table. I went up, got up on the table by myself. I mean, well, I didn't jump up or spring up, but I mean, I went up on the table myself, and they just stood there and were at awe. I mean, what a difference. I had the radiation. Nothing to it. I didn't, this isn't too bad. We... My back was burning, and I, they did warn us, so even that whole week that we were waiting for this, we put cream on my back to prepare for this. I was taking a supplement called NAC, which we know is good for, you know, removing radiation and stuff out of your system. Um, it went well. Now, it's a three-hour drive home, but half an hour before I got home, it hit me. Oh, I wasn't sure if we were going to make it. I got in the door and I crashed. I mean, that was it. I was in such excruciating pain. Oh, I was sick as a dog. And they said, oh, there's no side effects to radiation. Huh. Okay, for me, there was. There was. But it only lasted a day. And I was feeling better. And it did help for the pain. Um... I was getting around. I still was using a cane because they warned me if I fall, I'm done. I would I would pinch my spinal cord. Well that was the sixteenth. The seventeenth, I went back to the hospital, which is an hour from here, for a full body scan, bone scan. 
That's a scary scan. Doesn't hurt. They give you an injection, you wait. Man, there's a screen and it flies around you. It goes around you from top to bottom. I mean, it passes within millimeters of your nose. I mean, it's, I mean, I was praying it wasn't going to hit me. But, uh, but it doesn't hurt, so that's not too bad. But, uh, you know, we know now that I'm, I've got a lot of lesions. Um, I'm going to insert some of them. I have all my scans. I had them on a CD. Um, up to this point, I still have a, the last scan, the ones I'm having next week. I will get later on. I'll get those scans for record, my record, too. And I'll put a couple pictures so you know what I'm talking about. I'll show a picture of my spine and some of my stuff. So it makes kind of sense where I'm at. Um, so we come home. Just remember at this point I still wasn't eating much and I still, I still haven't pooped. I don't know how many days it's been. The 19th of May. It had been so bad that I was throwing a bile. I was plugged so bad. I mean, we tried everything. Suppositories, uh, um, Ducalax, uh, Senna, Senna something. I tried all of it. Nothing. I mean, I was in a, I was in a bad way. I don't think I could lay down in the car or sit down in the car for an hour to get to the hospital. We called an ambulance. I mean, we're lucky. We're, what, two minutes from the ambulance station, dear? Yes. We're like two minutes from the ambulance station. They were here in a blink of an eye. And they were very good. And they got me to the hospital in no time. Um, so that's another whole deal, you know, because I don't know if it's from the radiation whether it's from the morphine pills, or I wasn't getting enough liquid in me, but I had blocked solid. Now, I was in the hospital, an IV, they done, a, they did another x-ray, another CAT scan. Uh, they allowed my wife to stay in the room with me for the whole time. It was good that way. Okay, so I got to the hospital, and, uh, they put me on an IV. Um, the doctor was going to give me a suppository, <laughs> and the nurse uh, said, "No, no. When you're blocked up high like that, you know, no, no, no suppository." Um, so I took her advice and refused the the uh, suppository, and uh, then went with, with the, the drip. And now it's. It's a strange feeling, you're stressed, to know that you, you know, that you can't go poo. I couldn't push, my back was in such pain that if I did try to go, it hurt so bad. So I was kind of stuck in a, sm a spot. And, I mean, they did treat us good. That, uh, you know, I didn't, hadn't eaten in days, and I, they wouldn't let me eat there. Um, I wasn't hungry anyway, but still. They'd actually put a little cot in my room for my wife to stay with me. They were really good. We had my own little bathroom, you know. It was really good. Most of the nurses were very kind. The doctor was kind. Um, we prayed a lot. We had people call me on the phone, prayed with me. Uh, Gordon Williams, uh, church. Uh, um, I finally did go. It was like a hallelujah moment. Oh my gosh. It wouldn't be so, I don't believe how good it felt to go to the bathroom. Because they'd moved me up to the operating room after a couple of days, and I thought, uh, that, does, that doesn't sound good <laughs> to me. You know, put me up there, but I guess they want me out of the emergency ward. But, uh, so I went there on the 19th. And I actually got out on the 25th. They... I had to go to poo before I could go, plus I had to be able to walk. So I had to wait for a physiotherapist to come up, and she brought up a walker. I have a video. I might even put a video in of this, in my first walk. Right now. Okay. Oh, that 
just take a minute, just stand here and get, get your bearings. How's your head feel? Better than I thought. Okay. Just take your time with all these positional changes. Whenever you get up, don't be in a rush to take steps. Take a minute and get, get yourself situated and then, okay. yeah, when you feel ready. Should I tr try to walk straight up? Yep. And I'm tempted to hunch over, but I don't want to keep doing that. Okay. So we'll head that way. I'll bring your, bring your uh, accoutrements here okay. with you. Yeah, good. Oh. How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. Just take a minute and catch your, take a couple deep breaths. You can see the other side of the room. Yeah. Now I'm gonna let you tell me how far you think you can go. I know you're doing really well. I think it's the, the walker's a good idea right now, just to just to get you stronger. Not necessarily that you're gonna need to go home. Right. And I did get up and walk around that nurse's station, and. Uh, so they said, you can go home. And I said, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I left the walker there. Um, yeah. Well, I'll go back a little, a little bit. Um, after having, we finally got to go to the bathroom. Uh, last day or so before they let me go home. They said, we're going to let you eat. I said, wow, fantastic. I was starting to get my appetite back. I was, you know. I hadn't eaten a night. I mean, I don't know if it had been, well, not since I was in the hospital, a bit before that, I was on boost and I wasn't eating much. And I couldn't keep it down. Um, they brought me jello. I, I'd forgotten how good jello was. I mean, it was wonderful. I couldn't believe it, how good it was. Then the next meal, they brought me jello. And the next meal, they brought me jello. Okay, this was starting to be a little bit, you know. But then they said, okay, we're going to step it up. I thought, wow, great. And they brought me chicken broth <laughs> and jello. And I pooped that night, so they brought me, I mean, they, they said, you can get what you want. Well, did I ever. I must say that hospital has good food. <laughs> yeah. I ordered whatever I could on the menu, just, I was hungry, which was a good sign. I thought, you know, I was hungry, and I mean, and then, like I guess, and then I, the, you know, the, 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 the physiotherapist woman come up and help me walk, and uh, I mean, I was went home and I was I was weak, I was quite weak and in quite a bit of pain still for the next while, but I was learning to deal with it. I mean, they prayed and got the edge off it. And I was, you know, I thought I'm doing good, cool. Now. I'm going to do add here or cut to a new video. We'll see. And I'm going to talk about my new diet. Or should I start uh, my, my how I'm going to deal with this cancer treatment? First is prayer and faith. Second is herbs and vitamins. Third is my diet. And then we're going to talk about my meds from the doctors. How does that sound?